says I'm live. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is day two of doing the mini quilts for uh, Kimberbell. And we're working on January right now. It is great to see everybody here in the chat. If you would like to join in on the chat, then you need to log into a Google account. And if you don't have one, you can just go to Google and type in Gmail address and it will uh, sign you up for Gmail. If you already have Gmail, you have a Google account and then you can use that to log in on YouTube and then you can chat and I can answer your questions. You guys are a lot easier to keep up with uh, here on this event than, um, you know, in the morning where there's like 400. <laughs> now we've only got about 60 and that's fine. So uh, last Friday, we worked on this one and we did the center one. So this is chilling with my snowmies. Okay. And if you want to watch it, um, I need to create like a playlist. I'm glad you guys are here too. This is going to be fun. Okay. So we, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. Last week on Friday, we talked about how to, the different options you could do for background quilting on these. If you want to get uh, the background quilting designs from Kimberbell, you can do that as a download and you can get all of the ones that uh, you want. You can a la carte them. Uh, you can get the whole nine yards and download the whole thing and all of that. If you want yours to look exactly like theirs, then you would want to get all of their background quilting designs. But if you've already spent all your Christmas money and you need some options, you can certainly use background quilting designs that you might have from other projects. You can use background quilting that is maybe in your machine. I've got the Brother Luminaire right here. And I've got some tips and tricks to kind of show you guys how to get around those kind of things. Now I am using a trimmer by George. Okay. And with the trimmer by George, I will be trimming up my blocks all at one time uh, by trimming away the batting and the stabilizer at once and then trimming, uh, flipping it around and then trimming the outer, uh, the background fabric. So uh, we also talked last week about possibly using the clear blue tiles and that's what I am using. So I have the clear blue tiles and I'm using their winter design. And is the batting only added after the quilt top is finished is what Sanella, that's a beautiful name. While reading the instructions, that's how you understand them, confirm. So in the instructions, they tell you that there are two different ways to quilt this. And I've got them right here on my tablet. Okay, and you've got option one and option two. This is on page eight, okay? So option one and option two. I just pulled a hair out of my head and then it was tickling my face. <laughs> All right, so. Option one is the block by block quilting. And now that's what I'm going to be doing using the clear blue tiles. Okay. And then option two is hooping instructions. It says this is for traditional hooping. And on option two, you're only going to be stitching the fabric on the stabilizer with no batting in between. And you will add the batting at the end. So yes, you are understanding that correctly. So there's two different ways you can do that. Hi, Candice. Glad you made it. Glad you're here. So great to see everybody. I love it. So just so you know, there's no giveaways on this one. This is a uh, sew along, embroider along for Kimber Bell's mini quilts. And we are doing January. So I'm in the middle right now of stitching up uh I just wanted to knock one out and I wanted to do one on the blue since I had done one, uh, since I had done a block on the light gray already, uh, I'm ready to trim that one out. Now that one, now see what I did on that one was I stitched, where is it? 
So I used very large. Uh, this is clear blue tiles all around background quilting. This is not the block by block. And I'm going to end up with batting and fabric in the seam allowance on this block. If you do it like that, and you certainly can, it's not that big of a deal. You do wanna be sure to press your seams open. I would give myself a half inch seam allowance all the way around and then press your seams open, okay? It's not gonna be that bulky. It's really not because the seam allowance is gonna be on one side, not doubled up with all of the batting. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. What size needle am I using? Oh, you're making cookies, Becky? Awesome. That's great. I am using a 7511 uh, Organ EBBR. That is my standard needle. I use that for just about everything. It's got it right here. This is what they are. This is Organ Needles, and it is the 7511 EBBR. Okay. EBBR is embroidery. All right. So that's what I'm using. <laughs> Becky's at therapy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was working on uh, this guy this morning and I have gotten to the part where they want me to put in a uh, water soluble thread in the bobbin. If you choose to do that, you do not have to. Okay, so this can get kind of confusing, but I just want to give you guys some options, okay? The whole point is to uh, take a Q-tip, a wet Q-tip, and rub it on the back of the fringe on his little scarf, and that will get rid of the embroidery bobbin threads, and it will turn those top threads loose, and you'll get a little fringe on the top, and it'll be real cute. Here are some options for that. If you have water soluble thread, I've got my little water soluble bobbin here and I put WS on my bobbin so I know that this is water soluble bobbin thread. The thread I use is Vanish by Superior. That's what I've got, Vanish Light by Superior, okay? This is it. So that's the bobbin. I only need one bobbin for this thing. Okay. My threads I'm using are Dimes Exquisite for the most part. There might be a glide in there somewhere. I don't know. But for the most part, it's Dimes Exquisite. And then the other bobbin that I'm using is the 70 weight. What did I do with them? Uh, they grew legs. Yeah, the 70 weight. I'm running out of them, you guys. I'm, I've used up that tube. And another thing you're going to need that we didn't talk about the other day is water soluble topping. This kind of topping, this looks like or feels like not saran wrap, but it feels like glad press and seal without the sticky. OK, so that's kind of it's nice and all right. And the whole point, it's nice and soft. It, it's what it sounds like. The whole point of this is to prevent. The stitches that are on top of the snowman body, which is that uh, iron on vinyl, okay, that prevents the stitches from being buried down into the vinyl and um, you so that you can see them better, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like right here, okay? I also chose to use brown for his arms versus black. The thread colors that you use are completely up to you, completely. You can even use different, you know, if you're sourcing your own fabrics and sourcing your own threads and you just bought the CD with the designs, you can do whatever you want, all right? Create your own little nine patch with a little snowman farm. It'll be fine. So you're having some trouble following them and you have one of our projects and excited, excited to start, Kathy, that's great. Okay, so I'm all finished with this. Now, if you don't have any water-soluble topper, what they used to use before they had water-soluble topper was saran wrap, pretty much, okay? So 
you just, it doesn't like to tear away quite as easy and it might require a little bit extra work with the tweezers around the edges if you cannot get a clean tear on the saran wrap. But the easiest way to do that, and I'm going to pull this out now, I'm finished, I'm pretty sure I'm finished with the, uh, with the body. Let me double, oh, let me put this back to normal. And let me, I jumped ahead on a snowman here because I wanted to make sure that I got him right. Yep. And we're going to trim all of these together at the end. Okay. So I'm going to leave all of my blocks uh, all together to um, either tomorrow or the next day, uh, depending, will determine when I trim them. I plan on these being like a uh, couple of day stitch outs. Okay. So let's see. Remove the fringe. Oh, I've got to stitch the fringe. I can't cut away the water soluble topping yet. I've got to do the fringe with the neck. Yeah. And you can see here in the picture, see how all that fabric, uh, that thread stands up on that scarf and everything. That's because water soluble topping was used. Do I sell organ embroidery needles on my store? Grace, they're in my Amazon store. So if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread, they're in my embroidery favorites. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start all over with a new one. And I will finish this guy in a little bit here. But I want to tell you, if you start a guy, you can go ahead and just don't take him out of the hoop. Otherwise, you'll never get him real lined. Okay. Hi, Margie. Good to see you back. Okay. So I've got another hoop here. I have the Brother Magnetic Hoop. Let me put this out of my way. And I've got it all ready to go. This is the 5 by 7 Magnetic Hoop. This was in the upgrade to XP2, I believe. And for those of you that were there this morning, I did find 10 end-to-end -end quilting designs in the embroidery <laughs> menu on the Luminaire. So, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. And I do need another bobbin because I'm about out. And that's what I was looking for. Here they are. That's what I was looking for. I've got three of them left for my 70 weight. I had somebody uh, email me and say that uh, she found them difficult to use because they're hard to line up. I would think, well, she didn't say that, but I'm guessing they'd be hard to line up on um, designs by Juju's. You can print the design, you know, on like some print and stick target paper or even on regular paper. Or I guess what you would have to do is stitch it out first out of the luminaire. You can't print those. So you would have to stitch it out first on a piece of uh, cutaway paper, uh, you know, stabilizer, not the, not the mesh, but like the stuff that feels like heavy paper. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put this bobbin back in here. We're going to start again and we're going to go in order so uh, we can all stitch this together. Okay. And I'm going to use my magnetic hoop because I don't want to take that other one out of the, I'll finish that one when we get done. I get to eat crow tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. Actually, Deborah, I was talking about the designs in Design Center. So technically I wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah. But okay, I'll I'll admit that. That's that's fair. All right. So I am going to be using the block by block designs that come with the clear blue tiles. So <laughs> Pam. All right, you guys, that's fair. <laughs> Rub it in. All right. I've never been wrong in my life. Yeah. I see how you are. <laughs> I'm a good sport about it. You guys definitely, definitely. All right. I'm going to jump out of where I am right now. And what I do want to pay attention to is I'm on stitch 16 of 18 on 5620. So I will take my handy dandy little friction marker right here. Okay. And I'm going to write, um, I'm on number 16 and the stitch number I am on is 5620. So I know exactly where to start 
the next time I go back to do this. Oh, I know, Pam, you're funny. It's fine. It's fine. All right. She says she's just funning with me. Hold on. I forgot to drink my, um, I forgot to drink my tea. You guys, the hours go by and I get dehydrated like crazy. I know you treat me like one of your family, ML, family, ML Weber. You're a sweetheart. All right. So I do have my water soluble bobbin in order to be able to do the fringe on the, the scarves. Now I'll tell you, if you don't have water soluble, it says to do it in a color that you can see, to change your bobbin thread to a color that you can see. You might want to choose like a light gray. So you can see that that's different than the white thread that is used for the regular bobbin. But if the light gray gets pulled up to the top accidentally, then it's not as visible. You know what I mean? So if your tension's a tiny bit off and it pulls up and you can see the bobbin thread on the top, then it's best if it's something that's a light color. So I would go with a light gray or a silver. Yeah. You didn't forget. Oh, you're not late, Evelyn. We just started. You're all right, sweetheart. Okay, so I need to... I did put my regular bobbin in here. Okay. And again, since you just joined, I'll let you know the Water Soluble, this is Vanish by Superior Threads. Okay. I don't know if it'll... If it would... Hello. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that's Vanish by Superior. Vanish Light. That is my water soluble bobbin thread. And that is, we're going to take a wet Q-tip and then we will um, get rid of the threads for the fringe on the scarf. And then it will just, uh, then you can just fluff those top threads up and you'll have little fringes on your scarf. You're on your scan and cut. Good for you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh, I'm going to go back to home and tell it okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to put in the block by block background quilting. And you're going to get four stitches on that before the design starts. If you choose to use your clear blue tiles, if you do that with the bobbin, does that make the top stitches fall out? Yes, Lori, that is the whole point so that the fringes on the little scarves fluff up and they're cute. It, it, they don't fall out. They don't fall out. They just fluff. Yeah, it works because it's got uh, underlay. I don't know. it. I've never had them fall out. No, they just fluff up again. <laughs> Becky, you're funny. Okay, so I have got the Kimberbell, where is it? Clear Blue Tiles USB, okay. And I'm going to pop this into the USB slot. You guys can look at the back of my head for a minute. Okay. So I'm going to go to embroidery and I'm going to go to the pocket for memory and I'm going to go to USB. Now I've got the embroidery quilting files and then instructions on block by block. Now, if you have an embroidery machine that cannot read down into folder structures, you're going to need to take it to your computer and extract that file out and save it uh, at a top level on the USB, okay? But on the Luminaire, probably in the Stellaire too, you can get down into those folders. I know on my PE770, I could not. That, that embroidery file had to be at the top level. As soon as I popped it in, I could see it. Okay, so I'm going to go to PES, and I'm going to go to Winter. And we have block by block and clear blue tiles. Now the clear blue tiles is what I used for this all over quilting background design. Now the reason I used this the first time was to show you guys what it would all, what it would look like if you were to leave this in the block and then press your seams open, trim it to size and then press your seams open, okay? So in the block by block, it's going to give us the outer block placement line for the batting. And then it's going to give an uh, attack down for the batting. So that's what we're going to do. 
Okay, so we've got all the different sizes right here. Here is the four by four. I want to get in here and show you guys what I'm looking at. Let's let's look at this screen. Because some of you have fancy machines with design center on it, and I want to show you some options. Okay. Let's look at options. We paid all this money for these machines. Let's look at it. Okay. So this entire design is four and a half by four and a half, which means the outer line is at four and a half. The inner line, let me get you in here. So I want you to see, I see four and a half by four and a half right up here. Okay. We've got the preview. There we go. So the outer line is four and a half by four and a half. Okay. The inner line is like four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then inside that, or maybe it's four, it might be four. I'll, we'll double check that. I'll tell you and let you know. I'm going to hit set. Okay. So I've got that in there. Now I want to go to, uh, let me get out of here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to pull this embroidery stick because I've already got the design loaded in the machine. As a matter of fact, I'm going to hit memory and I'm going to save it in the machine because I'm going to use it quite a bit. So I don't have to pull it up every time uh, off the USB. Now I'm going to put in the USB with the designs on it and let you look at the back of my head again for a second. Okay. And now I want to hit add. And which is our first snowman? That one is the guy with the little blue hat and the zigzags on his hat. Okay. So I'm going to go to memory for the pocket and USB. And I'm going to get my embroidery files, PES and January. Okay. That's this little guy right here. Yep. Now he's sitting on top of the background quilting. Let me bring you in so you can see. Okay. So now he's sitting on top of the background quilting. All right. Just like that. So I'm going to hit set. Now, if I want, if I didn't have those in the right order where it was background quilting first and then the snowman, I could go into edit. And right here, this bottom button is a stitch order changer. You can, and you can switch them around. See that? Now the snowman's first and then the background quilting. Very handy to have that and know how to use it. I'm going to tell it okay. So I'm going to go into embroidery. All right. So. The very first line we have is four and a half as the um, this is the placement line for the batting. Again, if you're not doing the block by block quilting, you would just ignore these few stitches that we're about to do and you would start with the snowman. OK, now I need to get to this and what it says to do is, let's see, snow me number one, peel the plastic film from the glitter. Oh, this reminds me, you guys, if you've got a multi-needle and you want to do this, in the, in the instructions, everywhere that there's a black dot, that's a call to action for you to do something. So before... You tell it to stitch that number, put your hand up. And don't forget, on, on the brother machines, it's it's not stitch, then stop. It's stop, then stitch. So you need to, it says, number one, stitch the snow detail. So you st stitch the snow detail. Okay. Is that is that correct? Yeah. You're going to stitch the snow detail and we're using white thread. So remember, these are color coded. That tells you what color thread you need. And if you have uh, 
color problems, they have given them symbols. So you need to stitch the snow detail and then you'll stitch the glitter placement line. And then right before number three, there is a, a black dot and it says place snowman glitter right side up. So that's where everywhere you see a black dot, you want to put the hand to stop the machine because you've got something to do. Okay. So just kind of think about that. Technically, you don't want quilting on top of the snowman, not unless it's a design feature. However, if you're doing traditional quilting, wouldn't the quilting go on top of the snowman? No, ma'am. No, usually background quilting is just that. It goes behind the uh, design on the top of it. Yeah. So that's, it's up to you. You could do what you wanted, but I, I wouldn't. These are designed to do the background quilting first. Okay. So let me put this right here. And you should have, I need to turn on my iron so that we can iron everything out. I've got myself a little project board here. And I've got my background fabrics and they have the woven fusible on the back of the background fabrics only. Okay. Here's the little gray ones. Okay. So that's what we're going to do now is one of the gray ones. And then I've got my binding cut into strips and the white on white snowflakes is your backing. Okay. So I've got all my little pieces right here. And I don't know where all my... My topper went to. Okay, so, and then I've also got my batting pieces are already cut. Okay. So I'm going to, now what I, what I will do is, usually what I will do is the first thread where it matters, the color matters, that's what I will use to go ahead and do all of the prep any stitch prep before that thread color stitches. So I only have to change the thread color like minimal times is what I do. You would not quilt on top of embellished designs like these. Yeah, Margie, that's, I wouldn't either. You, you can, but I don't think that's really the look you're going for. So, all right. Uh, the first thread I'm technically going to need to be able to see is the light gray because that is the snowflake background quilting that I'm using from the clear blue tiles. So I'm gonna grab my light gray and put it in here. Now, when I get finished here with you guys, I'm going to uh, jump over on my multi-needle and finish up these snowmen. <laughs> but I'm doing it with a single needle for you guys first. So all of my single needle peeps can see how it's done. All right. So now, again, when you do the background quilting, you're going to get four square stitches. That is uh, placement line for the batting, tack down for the batting, placement line for the fabric, and a tack down for the fabric. But I'm not going to stitch the tack down of the fabric because I'm going to trim my blocks with the clear blue tiles. So there's a little tip right there. All right, so put the do lolly down right there and I'm ready to go. And we are gonna go ahead and just stitch. Yeah, of course. Yeah, a lot of, most people have single needles. I do both. I am using, the, what stabilizer am I using? This is a uh, poly mesh stabilizer. Okay. And here is, so that's the placement line for the batting. And then I'm just going to lay my batting on top of it, making sure that all of the placement line is covered. And once this finishes stitching, if you're not using the trimmer by George, and again, the trimmer by George is the ruler. It is proprietary to Hoop Sisters. I've got it linked below. I think if not i'll make sure that it is and it has a metal edge on it and what this does is this allows you to trim all of your blocks just post it on your guild page oh good awesome <laughs> so all of your blocks can be trimmed at the end but this gets the edge of the rotary cutter right up next to the edge of the batting all right or that stitch line if you are not if you don't have a trimmer by George, 
now that the placement or the tack down line has happened for the batting, all right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this away. So when you're cutting away, you always want to cut on a firm, flat surface. Now I'm cutting this one with you guys, but all the other snowmies from now on, I'm just going to leave this batting in place. I'm not going to trim it in the hoop. I'm going to trim it when we get finished because I've got the trimmer by George. Okay. So you want to get yourself a pair of curved embroidery scissors. These are gingers. They're not inexpensive. Don't go cheap. They are worth every penny, but the cheap ones hurt your fingers. These have a nice rounded bottom. Okay. And it is, these are designed, hold up your, hold up your stay, um, your fabric or your batting. Let me get in here so you can see. You just want to pull up your batting and you want the, you don't want it like this. You don't want it like that. You want it flat. Okay. And I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to cut right on top of this line. Now, what that does is that prevents you from having any batting in your seam allowance. See how close that is? The trimmer by George does a better job than this. Okay. So that's why you want to get a trimmer by George. If you're going to be making these designs, any designs by Juju, tiling scenes like this, uh, you definitely want to get yourself one of those rulers. It will make your life so much better. If you accidentally cut your stabilizer, get yourself some paper tape. Let me show you. Get yourself some paper tape, all right, and tape the back of this, of the, uh, the hoop, just take your sta stabilizer closed and keep on going. Doesn't matter. You didn't ruin your project. Okay. All right. So now you've trimmed away the batting and throw that away. And I'm ready to pop this back into the embroidery machine. All right. Okay. Now this is the this is the placement line for the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's going to stitch outside of the batting. See that? Stitching outside of the batting. So your outer stitch is four and a half and your inner stitch is four. What was the step that you don't do? You're going to use the trimmer by George. What you don't do is the next step. Okay. If you're going to use the trimmer by George, don't do the next step. So I'm going to take the fabric. Okay. And I'm going to put the fabric up here and I'm just going to lay it over the top. If you're going to use the trimmer by George, I would not bother with the next stitch because that is the tack down stitch for the fabric. And you don't need that if you've got trimmer by George. Okay. That's not what you need. All right. So I am going to go ahead and stitch this down and this stitch also I'm doing it because I already trimmed away the batting. Okay. <clears throat> on all my other blocks from now on, I won't be stitching this stitch. If you accidentally forget and do stitch the stitch, that's okay. <coughs> it's a great big wide uh, basting stitch. And it'll come right out. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at this real quick. So if you're using the trimmer by George, this isn't going to work because... When you pull up your fabric, you're on that outer four, four and a half stitch line. There's still another quarter inch up to the batting right in there. See, that's why. Okay, so I'll put this back in here. Now, the background quilting is going to be done. So for those of you that have these big fancy machines that can uh, do some digitizing, kind of think about this, all right? Let's think about this. You can create a four inch 
square in your design center. And then you can dump some background quilting in there if you want. That's up to you. Okay. So kind of think outside the box. Pam, this is the uh, Brother 5x7 magnetic. Came with the XP2 upgrade, I believe. All right. So, or was it XP3? I can't remember. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the background quilting now. This is the winter scene from Clear Blue Tiles. And this is going to stitch within that four inch square. So I'll show you, it never gets, it never gets out to the edges of the four and a half. See that? It stays, let me move this up so you guys can see. Sorry. It never stitches out to the edges. So I've got, this stitch is right out almost to the edge of the batting. So you can use that trimmer by George. All of the Kimberbell block by block designs do this. Yeah, I, this, this hoop is pretty cool. I like it. It's very cool. Excuse me. Sorry. So you guys, I wish everything was all cut and dry, but it's not. But I'm trying to give you guys some options. And you can think outside the box. Uh, Kimberbell Designs are, uh, well, that's all right, Belinda. Glad you made it. So Kimberbell Designs are stitched so well. And if you want to get their block by block designs to do this too, then that would be great. Okay. What this outer stitch line does on this block by block is it becomes your guideline for where you need to trim. So you've got to think about that, right? Because you're going to trim these up to four and a half inches square. And the design is four and a half inches square. So you just have to trim it like that. So you got to remember that if you're going to digitize your own design for background quilting, then you would digitize it to four dump your design into four, but you need to trim it to four and a half. So, <laughs> well, Evelyn, you're welcome for sharing the knowledge. I just don't want it to be super confusing, but there are so many different options and I get it. People love Kimber Bell. It's super, super cute. And they're a lot of fun, but um, sometimes we don't have everything we would need in order to make it look like theirs. So there's a lot of different options you can do. Okay. All right. So now I have done the background quilting and it turned out just beautiful. I did not get the background quilting for the mini quilts. I am using Kimber Bell's Clear Blue Tiles Winter Design. Isn't that pretty? That's adorable. Yeah. So there are, there is a lot of options. Okay. All right, so the next design, uh, it it tells you, I've got a preview. Most embroidery machines will give you a preview of what the next stitch is, and then you can kind of figure out based on your fabric and uh, what that stitch is, what color you want to use. So I am using, and as well as they recommend, the light aqua. <laughs> you even understood all that techie stuff this morning. Well, good. Yeah. I know that's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm going to, I'm getting rid of the silver. So the way I change my thread is I cut it right on this side of that upper thread guide. I'm going to grab my mint color because this is what I'm using. I think that a metallic silver would be really pretty on these little sparkles on this. All right. I just twist them together and do a single knot. Okay. And then I reach in front of the needle, unthread it and pull it through. And I do like to run my thread through the thread guide on top that is actually for the bobbin. All right. I need to thread my machine and I'm going to let it stitch the little sparkles. If you have a machine that does not cut jump threads, and by jump threads, it means it's stitch, 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 and then it finishes. 
my iron was going to want to go off on me. So stitch, 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 stitch. It finishes just like this. Now it's jumping to the next little snowflake sparkle it's doing. If your machine does not cut the jump threads, let me stop this. So if you have a machine that does not automatically cut the jump threads, then what you need to do is let it finish stitching it, it you know, whatever it's doing, the first part. Then it's going to jump to the next little sparkle, let it do the lock stitches and do about 10 stitches into the design. Okay. And then you want to stop the machine and you want to grab that jump thread and you want to cut it before it keeps going. Because what can happen is, is you'll get jump threads everywhere and you'll have a hot mess. So you want to stop that machine, not let it do the lock stitch and let it stitch about 10 stitches into it. So it's going, stop it, pick it up. So if you think about the jump stitch, it had a part where it stopped the first design and where it went to the second design. So that created a natural tension between the stopping point and the starting point. If you trim it where the starting point of the second, the next design happened, that natural tension will cause that thread to pop up. And you can grab it with your tweezers and snip it at the stop point of the first. That's not that big of a deal on this one because these little things are pretty far apart. But when you're doing cutting jump threads between lettering that is that far apart, that's a very helpful little tip to know. Let it get to going on the second thing. Stop it. Trim it at the start point of the second design and let that thread pop up so you can grab a hold of it. Okay. So just like I just stopped that one right now, I would cut that jump thread. When these machines, you'll see that what it just did is went, it cut the jump thread and then it got everything out of the way and moved to the next design. That's what that does. Why did I have to thread the machine since I pulled the thread through the needle? Oh, I didn't pull it through the needle, Bernadette. I never do that. I didn't. Don't forget your twists. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't pull the knot through the needle. I, um, I pull it. I pull unthread the needle and just pull it. And then I cut it off back up here, just like usual. And then thread the needle. Yeah. Oh, I got a little... I guess that's supposed to look like that. Okay. So we have jumped into doing the snowman design. So we've got our first little sparkles here. Yeah. This is good. We've got almost 200. You guys give the video a thumbs up if you would, please. I'd appreciate it very much. I really enjoy these live formats. I get to answer your questions on the fly. And uh, yeah, my tweezers, right? <laughs> I get you. Um answer your questions on the fly and I have been suffering with some uh, muscular issues that cause my arm to go numb when I am spending hours and hours editing videos. So the live allows me to um, still do tutorials for you guys, but not have to spend the rest of my life editing, <laughs> which I was doing. That's great. I'm so glad you're here, Fisher. Okay. Um, you're going to need a piece of your uh, three, three by four and a half piece of the glitter vinyl. Okay. And on the glitter vinyl, you are sweetheart. You're late as always. Walk the dog, but you'll watch the replay. Okay. All right. On the DBT procedure and it worked on your still air. Oh, okay, good. All right. So. Here's the glitter vinyl. You want to pull this plastic. It's a sticky plastic. You want to pull that off. So you've just got the glitter vinyl. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside and I take my sticky plastic and fold it up and get it out of the way. Yeah. Now on your vinyl, FYI, you're going to get for January, you get two pieces like this. 
Okay, hold on. You're going to get two big pieces like this. This thing, it tells you you need a three by four and a half. And this thing is six and a half by nine and a half. So I cut it long ways first. You can get two three inch strips. I, I think that's the wet, best way to do it, don't you guys? Let's see, otherwise I could get three. Yeah. If you do it long ways first, you're gonna get four pieces out of it. If you do it short ways first, you're gonna get three pieces out of it, okay? So cut it long ways first. Pretty sure that works like that. You'll have enough, don't you worry. That sticky plastic is heat resistant. You can use it to cover the vinyl if you're ironing it instead of a pressing cloth. Oh, Margie, that's a great tip. Thank you. All right, so next we need to do the outline for the snowman. And so this is going to be a placement line for you. So I need to change my thread color to white. So I'm gonna cut this and grab my white. That's a good tip. I'm just doing it the way the instructions say. <laughs> but that is a good tip. I've never tried that. And you know, I have ironed, I know when I did red, white, and bloom, I forgot to use a pressing cloth the whole time. I just ironed it and it did fine. <laughs> Okay, and here is the placement line for our snowman. You're waiting your mini quilt packages. Yeah, that'd be fun. Jasmine, you like how I fix things. That's because I break things a lot. <laughs> I'm pretty good at fixing them. All right. I can barely see my outline, but I know it is there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this. Make Just make sure it's all completely covered. I'll get you in here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. That's pretty close. You want to leave yourself enough around the outside of the line so that you've got something to hold on to to trim it. Whoop. Now, I kind of like it puffy without the ironing down part because I don't know. I don't know that you need to iron this. They say to press it. Okay. So see how it looks there? It's kind of puffy. Okay. If I iron it down, which I did on this guy over here. Um... Let me show you. See how you can see the background quilting behind the ironing? I think I'm going to leave it unironed. I don't think I'm going to iron it. I'll see how it goes. If it needs to be ironed, I'll iron it. Okay, we need to trim this away. I'm going to put it down here in my lap. And get my little firm surface. You always want to trim on a firm surface so you don't pop anything out of your hoop. And my scissors. Okay, I am not pre-cutting the fabric because it's just too small, it's not that big of a deal, and it's just a couple of pieces. I'm not going to get all in there. If you do want to pre-cut your fabric with your cutting machine, I recommend you test it first to make sure that the uh, SVG files are the right size. Word to the wise, okay? Or from the wise, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes Kimber Bell's SVG files can run a tiny bit small. And in the past, I have had to hit plus two on the size of the SVG file in order for it to be large enough to fit. This is supposed to be, this one right here on this glitter is supposed to be a raw edge applique. So you don't want to pre-cut this. but you do want it smooth. Okay. All right. And next is the decorative outline stitch for the snowman. 
And it's going to stitch that down. Oh, 9 19. Let's take a look. Yep. It's number four on page eight. We are stitching the decorative outline of the snowman. Okay. So the next piece we're going to need is this blue for his hat. This is in your embellishments kit. And if you're sourcing your own fabric, it's a little knit. It's kind of got some stretch to it. It's a ribbed knit. That's what it looks like. Let me hold this up. See that? It's a ribbed knit. You whack a piece off a sweater, <laughs> t-shirt or something. Sacrifice something. Okay. So let's see here. It says that a neutral thread can be used. So it doesn't matter what color. It's got the little uh, lines through the square. But we need to stitch the placement line for the winter hat. So we're on uh, item number five on this. So I'm going to go ahead and change out to a blue thread. Says it doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do this. Let's see here. Besides, I don't think that this knit you'd have to use if you wanted to pre cut, you would have to use ironing mates that stick to the fabric. Sometimes there's a heavy satin stick to your vinyl, may come up. Ah, I see. Okay, so um, if you're going to pre-cut your little hat pieces on your Scanna Cut, I would recommend the rotary blade on this. It is not cotton, okay? All right, so. So this is the placement line for the little hat. Place the fabric right side up. Okay, I need to pay attention to my ribbing, I guess, so that it looks right. Which way did they do theirs? Because I can't make a decision on my own. Looks like theirs goes vertically. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I will put my little ribbing almost kind of at an angle because his little hat's at an angle. Yeah, now see it's stuck to my fingers. And the tack down. It's saying to tape it. You don't have to. You can if you want. It'll go around twice. All right. Now we need to remove the hoop and trim the fabric away. Trim it right next to the line. If you make a mistake and you shove your scissor into the hat, which happens, and you cut your hat, just cut this fabric away from it, put it on top of it, and back up using your needle plus minus button and stitch it again. Just give it two layers of a hat. Nobody will know but you, okay? So there's very little that is not recoverable. And if you used, see how I used kind of down to one side of the fabric? That's the reason I do that. In case I make a boo-boo, I've got a little bit more up here that I can recover with. That's always very helpful to do that. Otherwise, if you did it right in the middle and you cut a hole in it, get another piece of blue fabric and slap it on top. Nobody will know. 
okay? That's don't don't even worry about that. All right, and now we need to place wash away topping and cover the upper half of the snowman. And that is so our stitches don't disappear down into our little snowman and his hat. So it says cover the upper half. I'm just gonna, I just cut it like a, I don't know, how big is this? This is a three by four, three and a half by four inch piece of this topping. I am going to tape this down because this likes to shift, okay? But you just, you don't, you just think about his little arms are going to be coming up out of this. And so you want to make sure you've got it down low enough so that his little arms are covered, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now we're ready to go back into the hoop. And we need to stitch the hat satin outline in the blue. So I don't need to do a thread change. He looks like he's ready to go. Isn't he cute? He's getting cuter by the minute. All right. All righty. Am I using my multi-spool stand today for the threads? Yes, I am. And that is right back behind the machine right there. It's got all the thread colors on it that I need in order so that they're right there and ready to go. So that's doing a nice heavy satin stitch right there. That's a really good question. Cheryl asks, if you can't find the white applique glitter sheet from Kimberbell, can you use glitter iron-on vinyls made from for Cricut projects? You might give that a shot. I think it'd be, I, I think it would work. Absolutely. Or maybe you've got some glitter from Designs and Machine Embroidery. They've got lots of glitter as well. Maybe you've got glitter from Sweet Pea from a project you did for them. I never throw that stuff away, you guys. I always hold on to it because you never know when you're going to need a little piece for something, right? So my little shirt here, this is Everything Embroidery Market from Lafayette last March. Uh, you have, but you can have more thread breaks. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea, Marty. Okay. Yep. She has. She's had thread breaks. Right. So... That particular vinyl is not designed to be sewn through. It's designed to be ironed on, right? So this, this vinyl, when you peel the plastic away from it, it has a more drapey feel to it than the vinyl that you get, like, you know, for a scan and cut type thing or a Cricut. Yeah. All right. And now, so we're going to leave this topper on the whole time until it tells us to take it off, which is like right at near the end. Okay, so now I need the little hat detail and that is a white. I'm gonna change my threads. I'm pretty sure the thread breaks that I was having the other day were uh, because of the thread itself. So if you find yourself having continual thread breaks, uh, give yourself an opportunity to uh, try some different threads. I've been very, very successful on this brother machine, all my brother machines with Isocord, Exquisite and Glide. So Eileen Roach uses Caesar HTV. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. You bet, Cheryl. Of course. Yep, I've got some of that down here. Yep, got it right here. 
And I've got like the aqua color, the green, and then the metallics to go with it from Kingstar. These are great little kits. If they, if you ever see these on sale, grab them because you never know when you're going to need some uh, sparkle, right? I haven't seen the white. So this has aqua, green, and pink in it. Yep, this is what this has. Aqua, the green, and the pink. I'll just like that. And then the matching metallics to go with it. I also have, and this will work. Now this is silver. I don't have white. But this is like a fabric glitter. This is from Sweet Pea. So there's lots of options that you guys can do. Okay. You just need to make sure you get the... You just need to make sure that you get the um, the design. All right. Where are we at now? The face. I need black. I have a thread color change. This will make you a believer in a multi-needle for sure. Don't forget, if you're on a multi-needle, everywhere you see a black dot, that is somewhere for you to put the hand up. Black dot in the instructions. You need to put the hand up because you have to do something. Whether it's put top or down or trim something away or whatever. So that makes it kind of easy. It gives you a roadmap to go ahead and program everything. And then it also gives you the roadmap because you have got the colors are right there telling you what you need to do. So, right. Bernadette is absolutely right. She was having thread breaks and she put her thread vertical instead of horizontal and it worked. Right. So em embroidery is completely different from garment sewing because of the speed of the machine. In garment sewing, you're controlling the speed, you know what's happening, and but in embroidery, the machine is controlling the speed, and that thread, depending on how it's wound, behaves better. Usually embroidery thread likes to stand vertical, yeah. <laughs> you do not need to buy another machine, no, no. You can get a thread stand for behind your machine, right? I've got one in, it's in my Amazon shop. Or you can put a cup behind your machine and stand your spool in there and pull it up like that and then up over the top of the machine. And then again, I like to use the top thread guide. But you can always use a new machine. Marty says that she's right. <laughs> All right, you guys, look here. I got jump threads. I want to show you. Either a jump thread or I had a tail that got snagged up because I was talking to you guys. See that? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean that up right now because it will drive me crazy if I don't clean it up right now. And to clean up these tiny little things like this. I have a pair, another pair of curved embroidery scissors. These are from Fomore. Those are very nice. And then I use these wicked pointy Revlon embroidery tweezers. I like these because I get a better grip than tweezers that are designed for sewing. Okay. So thumbs up, everyone. That's right. Thumbs up, thumbs up. So let's clean up the unibrow here on Mr. Snowman. <laughs> let's see what this was. Was it a tail or was it a jump thread? Looks like a jump thread. So this one was a tail. I'm going to trim that. Now the jump thread went from here to here. So I'm going to get it under there and snip it and it stands straight up. See that? There it is right there. I snipped it right here and I'm sorry I wasn't in the right spot. So now I've got little jump threads all over the place here. So where these are, this is where it went. It went from here to here to here to here. So I'm going to cut that one and it stands up. That looks like a tail. Ah, okay. Maybe it was a tail that didn't get pulled down in from the first one. That, that, yeah. 
I will get this later probably because I don't want to accidentally poke into my uh, vinyl. All right. Okay. So now let's see what we got to do. What are the instructions? Oh, we have our little arms. So I need a thread color change. I'm using brown. I didn't want to use black. So I'm going to use brown. You can use black if you want. That's what the instructions say. Mm. We have a problem here, Houston. Let's see. I've got I've got threads that got mixed in with each other. There we go. That's better. I think. I hope I don't have a hot mess of a thread nest coming up on me. Yeah, they got twisted around one another that back there on that spool because I didn't I didn't have the tails tied up. Let me pull this. I gotta fix this, you guys. Let me do this. I don't want these twisted around one another. So this mint here is the issue. There we go. Okay. That's fine. All right. Watch your, watch your tails, you guys. You don't want them getting all. Boy, that'll cause a problem, too. It'll tie up and snag back there, yank everything up every which way. It's a hot mess. You don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to stitch his little arms. So I've got a tail that didn't get pulled down in. I'm going to let it get to going. And now I'm going to. I know I put my. There they are. I don't want that hanging out because it'll leave a little tail. You guys been embroidering a long time. Okay. Why do you have? Okay. You got your what, Mary? Oh, the 10 spool holder that attaches to the top of the large brother machines. Ah, okay. Yeah, my camera's not in focus. Are you sure? That could be. Especially when I stood up and sat down and didn't know what to look at. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Now, what's really nice... <laughs> Margie bought a new machine. Oh, okay. You don't need another one. What's really nice about the Luminaire is this top folds flat back. In the Stellar, it doesn't. So that's a nice little feature. So I like to put my applique pieces up here and all of that. All right. What's next? The carrot. I need to get his little nose on here. This is why I have a 10 needle, you guys. Now, if you are using a 10 needle and you're doing these mini quilts, so like for your snowman, you're always going to use a white and a black and an orange, right? And me, the brown for the arms on every single snowman. So I would put those colors toward the center or the back of the thread order up top and those spools out on the edges or the sides that are easier to get to, leave that to be the ones um, that are gonna change. You're finding larger knots on the back of the Luminaire stitched items compared to the Dream Machine. Anyone else? Cindy, are you using the bobbin case with the purple dot? Because that, that matters. That has a different tension than the bobbin case with the green dot or no dot. So double check that. Okay. We'll blame your internet. Yeah, Margie. Okay. Let's uh, stitch a nose. You will get better stitch quality using the purple dot bobbin case. Mm 
green, oh, the green screw. Wait a minute. No, hold on. Okay, I got to change out my bobbin. I need the gold thread. Hold on here. Let me get, what color scarf do we want? We'll do this, do this gold. I didn't pick it. Mm, do I want this one? I think this will be fine. That'll be fine. I'll put it on this one. No, the bobbin case has a little dot in the bob in the bottom of it on the metal part. And the purple dot is for embroidery. Okay, so I'm changing. This is a thread color change for the scarf. I'm on uh, step number 12. And there's a dot before that, so there's a call to action there. I've got to do something. I need to switch out to my water soluble bobbin. Put that right up here. What do I do with it? Again, this is Superior's Vanish Light. Okay. All right, let's stitch the fringe. switch the bobbin back to regular bobbin thread. We only use it for those fringe. I'm going to stick that right up there so I know where it is. Oh, you know what? I've got another bobbin. I need to use up the end of, let me use that. And now we're going to stitch the rest of the scarf and the fringe tack down. So this is uh, step number 13 in the instructions. And I'm on stitch number 18 of 19 on the machine. Well, actually, this is the last one. We do not stitch the next step. Well, hi, Norma. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Pam. <laughs> Weight Watchers. Yeah, it works. If you do it, if you follow the plan, you'll lose some pounds. Absolutely. So I had wanted to show you, Cindy. Um, I don't want to mess with my internet. I'm sure I can stay on there. Let me see if I can find a bobbin case that I like the one I'm talking about. So this one doesn't have any color in the bottom of it. Okay. That would be for sewing. Let me see if I've got one. I've got an extra one. No. These are all sewing cases. Yeah. Okay. So this next one says, do not stitch this step. It's in bright yellow. And right here, number 14. It says, do not stitch right there. Okay. So this is line is for design placement only. Remove the tape, tear away the excess topping, and dissolve any remaining topping with a wet cotton swab. Well, I did not bring a glass of water in with me, y'all, or a Q-tip. So I'm just going to pull this off and just kind of pull it up. And it pulls up really super easy and very cleanly, okay? Okay. Again, if you don't have any of this, you can use, you know, something, something clear like it, like Glad Press and Seal. But the problem with Press and Seal is that it's sticky 
and it will want to stick to your project. So this stuff is better because it doesn't have sticky on it. Let me pull this up off the hat. All righty. So I've got lots of little bits here that need to get cleaned up. Okay. And sometimes all you need is just a good pair of tweezers to get in there and just pull it loose like that. Now, it's going to be real hard to get this off of these little bitty stitches. So I will take like a Q-tip. Don't uh, drop these into a sink. That is not recommended. You don't want to do that. Okay. So I've got some extra little, you know, uh, cleanups that I could do on this. But for now, we are done with this guy. So we've done the little snowman here. I've got an extra thread loop right there that I don't want. And the idea behind the fringe is to get rid of that. You can kind of scrape it with your finger. I just wet my finger, you guys. If it's good enough for the hair to slap it down for church, right? <laughs> Did your mom used to wet her finger, spit her on her hand and scrub your hair? And then you just scrub it like this. That's what the back looks like. Not too bad. Yeah. That's a good healthy stitch right there. See how you've got blue on both sides and a white line through the middle. That's a good, healthy stitch for embroidery, okay? But all of these, we've got two lines of yellow and white in the middle, and on the carrot, two lines of orange and white in the middle. It's a nice, healthy stitch. And then what you do here is you use your fingernail and fringe up these little pieces. I need to get more water on it. So, but that is the idea, you guys. See his little fringe? Isn't he cute? He looks so happy. <laughs> too fun, too fun. All right. So this is all done. And that was so easy to do. So awesome. And then to take this out, let me show you how I take this out of the hoop. I'll just pop this loose. And I've got one of Lori Holt's, I've got her metal book stand back here. And I use that for my magnets <laughs> on, on these when you're, because what happens is, is you set them down and you forget where you put them and then they're gone. And then you're going, now, where did I put those things? Dang it. Right. Pull this out. Because I lose them. They have a tendency to grow legs when I'm not looking. All right. So this is all ready to trim up. He turned out great. Very, very happy with this. Yeah, it looks wonderful. You have forgotten. Will the squares be joined like quilt as you go or traditional joining for quilts? Uh, a little bit of both, really. Um, yeah, so the now on this one... Once I cut this, because I use the block by block and I trim the batting away before I uh, allowed the final tack down to stitch for the fabric. Okay. So what, what happened, this is actually, now this outer stitch line is actually a cut line. That is a four and a half inch and you've got to trim your blocks to four and a half inches. So essentially, if you run your rotary cutter right inside that stitch line, the only thing you're going to have in your seam allowance is just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of batting and the fabric um, from the, the, the background fabric. Now, if you forgot and you let this stitch what you can do, 
is take your handy dandy power tools with thread seam ripper that my husband made. And this is a really wide basting stitch. So you can just pop this in here. You don't have to, okay? Let's say you wanna do the trimmer by George. Just pop that in there and up it goes, supposedly. This thing's dull because <laughs> I've used it a lot, right? Let me move you in a little bit so you can see. On these things, you kind of want a firm surface is good. Just undo the first couple of stitches. Put your seam ripper in with the point to the left or the right if you're right-handed, if you're going the other way. But you want the point, the pointy end to the inside, the little ball to the outside, and then rotate it down and push. Just like that. Okay. So if you if you're wanting to do the trimmer by George, because essentially if you're doing trimmer by George, you're, you're still going to have your batting out here, right? Yeah. So I would now to trim this up to four and a half, I would run my rotary cutter exactly just see the thread line right there. I'd run it exact, just like just inside of it because you don't want that to accidentally show in a seam allowance. Okay. You can use their uh, orange pop rulers if you want, but you don't have to have them. Okay. Now, if you've got the trimmer by George, let me show you what you would do. So, we're going to simulate like we're in the military, okay? So that you have the trimmer by George. Let me back this out. Go wide just a little bit so you can see. So the trimmer by George, you did not stitch down this outer tack down line for the background fabric. You just fold this up. Your batting and your stabilizer is right here. And so then you put your metal edge right on the edge of the batting stitch line, the tack down line for the batting. And this isn't tall. You need a tall enough. I need a um, 60 degree. Yeah, this isn't tall enough, you guys. I need my big rotary cutter in order to do this. But essentially what you've done now is you've cut away the stabilizer and the batting all at the same time. Then you flip this back over. And then you use and you trim this down. Now you need to trim the block to four and a half. And you probably want to use the orange pop rulers if you've got them. Okay. But I can see the stitch line because I did that. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. Yeah, your quilt your way. Absolutely. I'm going to hold off. I, I need to make sure I've got four and a half on this guy because he is supposed to sit kind of down into the seam allowance. Right. Four and a half. Yep. And that line is at eight and a half right there because I've got him sitting on. So if I if I put him over here on the end on the zero, here is four and a half. So it is supposed to, you're supposed to cut it right like that. So it, this is going to be seam allowance right here, right? Right there. That's going to be seam allowance right on the inside of that ruler. Okay. Just like that. So he's all finished and he's ready to get uh, stitched in with his buddies. So he turned out pretty cute. All right, you guys. Okay. Y'all have homework. Stitch some snowies. <laughs> oh, this has been a lot of fun, you guys. And we didn't even do too bad about an hour and a half. That's pretty good for me yakking away. Right. So go ahead and get your snowmen stitched up. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, Maybe the next day, depends on how long it takes me to get these together. I will let you guys know in the situation room, but if you're subscribed to the channel, 
you will get a notification for day three to put all these guys together for the January. Or maybe we'll just do them like next Monday at 10. How about that? Let's make an appointment. Yeah, let's uh, let's take the rest of the week to get these guys all stitched together and then enjoy your Christmas. And um, we'll stitch them all together and put our January snow bees together next Monday. I like that idea. All right. You guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoy yourselves this holiday season. Have a very Merry Christmas if I don't see you in the situation room, but please join us. I'll be here every day this week at 7 a.m. All right. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go say something. Bye.